Welcome back Chemistry 30. So with this video we're going to look at this solubility review and practice. Um, I'm going to go through a few questions with you and then uh, leave you with some to do for the hand and assignment. Um, so first of all if you can grab your uh, chart out that looks like this. What this is, this is a precipitate chart and it tells you what types of compounds form a precipitate. So some key things to note, you notice I have the alkali metals circled and I also have the nitrates circled. And the neat thing about those is that no matter what negative ion these alkali metal ions are with, they're always soluble, there won't be a precipitate formed. And then oppositely here, nitrates, um, they can be with any positive ion, and again, there's no precipitate. Ammonium ion, also no precipitate. So wherever you see the word soluble, that means no precipitate because it actually dissolves in water. Acetate, um, on your pink sheet I have acetate in the form of C2H3O2 negative, so you should put that in there just so you realize that it's a different way of uh, rearranging the C's, H's and O's. Acetate with any positive ion is soluble, except with silver. When you have silver acetate that comes out of solution to form a precipitate, it doesn't dissolve in water. So this chart is set up so that you look at the negative ion first, find the positive ion and then go to the right to see what happens there. So if you look here, chloride, bromide and iodide, if you have any of those negative ions in the presence of silver, lead 2, mercury 2 or copper 1, it's not soluble which means PPT. Whereas if you have any of those combined with any other positive ion, it's soluble. Okay, so you have groups here, this is the group 7 elements. Sulfate, you can see if it's in the presence of any one of these, it's a precipitate. Anything else, no preci precipitate. So you may just want to add this into your chart. The fact that soluble means it's dissolved, so no precipitate. If it's not soluble, however, that is a precipitate. So you may want to just pause the video now and just to get that information down. Okay, so once, and then once you have that, we'll look at some of these questions here. <clears throat> I'm going to go through questions 1 to 5 with you, uh, one of them from 6 and a couple from 7 and 8 and then um, part of the assignment you'll be handing in is some questions from 6 and some questions from 7. So if you look at number 1, what is the identity of the precipitate form when lead to nitrate combines with potassium iodide? Okay. So the key thing to do there first of all is uh, write down what each of those are so lead nitrate, of course lead, it's the lead 2 ion, so once again your pink sheet, you have to pull these ions from there, lead 2 is PB2+, plus. Uh, nitrate is NO3-, minus. potassium is K+, plus. iodide is I-, minus. so from that you can figure out which uh, the formula is for each of those, okay? So we have them looking like that, I'm just going to make another thing here, another screen, so we don't see everything all at once here. So you can see here that lead and nitrate, we need to have two nitrates to balance one lead, so we have, this is the formula for lead nitrate, lead to nitrate. Plus one, minus one, they come together in a one to one ratio, so Ki. Okay, and of course we know that they're going to switch Ion, so lead will form with iodide and potassium will form with nitrate. Now one key thing here, I have note all nitrate compounds are soluble. That's what I mentioned earlier. So when potassium combines with nitrate, it is going to be aqueous because all nitrates are soluble. If we go back to your chart, nitrates with anything including potassium in this case, it's not soluble. So if we know that there is a precipitate form with this reaction, it has to be lead iodide. And if we go back, iodide with lead, iodide combined with lead 2, PPT, so that is the precipitate. So then it's just a case of putting those ions together. When lead combines with iodide, lead is worth two positives, Iodide is 1 minus, so of course we have to have twice as much iodide as lead to make the formula. Potassium nitrate, 
plus one, minus one, so they come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. And of course, over here we have two nitrates, so we have to put a two in front of here to get two nitrates. That's going to give us two potassiums, so we've got to put a two in front of here to get two potassiums. That, of course, is going to give us two iodides, and hey, I have two iodides from this formula right here. Lead two iodide. Okay, so that's basically how you use that chart. Okay, if I look at the next question here, number two, write a balanced equation for the reaction of silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Okay, so silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So sodium, silver nitrate. Well, again, look at your pink sheet, figure out what these ions are. We have Ag plus, NO3 minus, Na plus, Cl minus. So you can see they come together in a one to one ratio. So AgNO3, NaCl. And then uh, if we look over here when they switch partners, AgCl. NaNO3, it's a nice one-to-one -one ratio. And again, sodium nitrate. All nitrates are soluble. So NaNO3 must be aqueous. That means the precipitate must be silver chloride. And if we go back to that chart to ensure that silver chloride is at chloride combined with silver PPT. Okay? So again, that's how we use that. That's how we use that chart. And if we go back to there, that's the end of that question. Number three: <clears throat> Write the net ionic equation for each of these. Um, so if we take a look at it, silver nitrate, sodium chloride. It is the one from number two. So we're just simply expanding what we already did there. So very similar to what you did in your lab. So we have our complete balanced equation. And of course we can break that down. Ag plus, so silver nitrate is aqueous, which means it breaks down to Ag plus and NO3 minus. NaCl breaks down to Na plus and Cl minus. AgCl solid, that's the precipitate, so it stays as that. And then NaNO3 breaks down into Na plus and NO3 minus, all aqueous except the precipitate. And then lastly, the net ionic equation shows the precipitate and the two ions that made the precipitate. So you can cross off the ions that remain the same from left to right, and you're left with the precipitate and the two ions that made the precipitate. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, they could take a look at 3B and 3C. We're at the end of this first part of the video. I want you to try 3B and 3C, and then uh, we'll take a look back in part two of this video segment and see how you made out. So write the complete balanced equation. That also involves figuring out the precipitate in that double replacement reaction, then the complete ionic equation, then net ionic equation. Okay, we'll see you soon.